What's up guys, welcome to Mikey Yourself. On today's video, we're gonna swap out the rear brake pads on my wife's 2018 Acura RDX. So the reason I'm doing this is not because the brake pads have gone bad, but because the brake pads that were on this car uh, when we bought it were semi-metallic pads and I'm swapping over to ceramic pads. So we're gonna cover a couple of things in this, just, you know, so information wise, but uh, I just, you know, if you have a car and you've inspected your brake pads and they look fine, but you still get a lot of squeaking. One of the things that you might be, you know, uh, being exposed to is kind of the quality around semi-metallic brake pads versus ceramic pads. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you go to AutoZone, you go to any other location to buy some brake pads, Rock Auto is a great example. You put in your car information and look at the brake pads and you'll find there's a, a, a pretty big price difference between ceramic pads versus the semi-metallic. The semi-metallic is a cheaper brake pad and it wears differently. Um, and one of the things I found in my experience is they tend to be noisier, right? So there are a bunch of other pluses around ceramic pads, um, but the big one for me at least, uh, just being an average Joe, is that they're quieter. So we're gonna get those things swapped out. I will talk a little bit about kind of just swapping out your brake pads in general because I know folks, you know, you go to the, the, the brake shop or whatever and they're charging like, you know, a couple hundred bucks to get your brakes done. And I just want to cover some things that you can do yourself versus the things you can't. And what I would recommend going to the shop for if you need to. So first things first, what we need to do is we need to make sure our vehicle is safe. And I've done that by chalking the front wheel. So I've got a big rubber um, chalk that's in that front wheel. You can't see it because the garage is closed. And then I have the car in park, but I do not have the emergency brake on. And the reason for that is because um, I need to be able to take those brake pads off. And if I have the e-brake uh, e on, it's going to put pressure on them. So those are off. Next thing is we're going to jack this thing up, get some jack stands underneath it, and make this thing all safe. But before I do that, I want to break the... Uh, um, break the, uh, the the lug nuts loose because it's easier to do on the ground you don't take them out you just break them loose all right guys so I just want to stress a little bit more on the safety thing because you know you're picking up a several thousand pound vehicle and you're you know potentially gonna have a your body or a limb underneath it so you want to make sure you're absolutely safe when you're doing this stuff so I've got my floor jack under here and on the Acura, it actually has a jacking point there on that cross beam. That's a pretty safe location to jack your vehicle up at. If you have a rear wheel drive vehicle, then I would recommend looking up safe jack points on that because you typically, and I've done it a million times, but you're not supposed to, and that is use the gearbox um, to jack up your vehicle. I mean, some of them are reinforced, so you can do that, but you do risk um, potentially cracking that. I've only seen a few videos of that happening, but it's it's possible, right? So once I get this thing up, I do have some floor jacks here that I'll be putting underneath. These are uh, very heavy duty jacks because I also use them for my Ram 1500. Um, you wanna make sure you don't cheap out on this kind of stuff because this is what's gonna keep you alive. This is what's gonna keep you safe, so um, I'm not saying you got to go buy the most expensive ones, but if they're on sale for like $10, then that's probably something you should question. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing jacked up and get it on the jack stands. Alright guys, so we've got the wheel off, as I mentioned. I've got not only the jack, but also jack stands under there to help keep this thing secure. Um, and I don't want you all to be afraid, like if you're doing this, it's, this isn't meant to scare you but just know that the risk is real and you just want to make sure you take the right steps if you take these steps you'll be perfectly safe um you'll see a lot of folks they'll they'll jack it up put it on jack stands and then they rock you know they they bump the car really good just to make sure it's solid i mean that's how solid these things are so you're 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 going to be safe okay um just wanted to cover kind of some of the things that you're looking for and then i also want to just touch on something that you may experience and know that you're not going to be able to fix yourself uh, and so let's cover that first so that first thing is if you've ever been driving and 
you go to hit your brakes and your car starts shaking it's like this like doo -doo 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 -doo. okay that is not just your brake pads right so what has happened is you know usually i think it's due to heat your rotor uh, for lack of better terms or maybe it's the right term exactly is it warped so it's got high points and low points so if you can imagine you know if you're old enough for a record imagine if that thing was wavy right so as you're spinning and you apply that pressure because it's wavy you're going to hit those high spots first and then you're going to be going and so it's going to kind of do this like shaking thing right so that's what you're feeling if you feel it really strong in your steering wheel then that means it's your front wheels that are like that um generally you don't really experience it in the rear but it can happen and and, and just kind of rule of thumb 70 percent of your braking on a vehicle is in the front 30 percent in the rear right because as you hit your brakes the weight shifts forward so it's really relying on those front wheels to slow you down the weight on the rear is coming loose so um that's just something to keep in mind now what i wanted to show you is kind of like if you wanted to inspect your brake pads you could take a look at them without having to pull them off and you can see like in my case these are these are pretty good these are pretty thick and when i pull them out i'll show you compared to the brand new ones right but these are good to go and then you kind of want to fill your rotor here um it's gonna not be perfect but you know as long as you don't have like a crazy lip right on the edge here and what i mean by that is like you run your finger up and then you feel this like huge lift um you know if you feel that then definitely you need to either look at getting new rotors or you take them to the shop and they'll they call it turning right they're going to turn them for you and what they do is they cut them down to make them flat again you can only do that so many times because these things got to stay a certain thickness and if you go beyond that then it will break down on you and there's a bunch of funny videos on youtube uh where folks are like uh you know they give really poor uh or funny kind of uh, uh descriptions and then you see this thing and it's toast right so we're gonna go ahead and take off the caliper and this is pretty simple so calipers are typically held on with two bolts right and these bolts are just like this one right here right so you got like a little rubber boot here and then the bolt here and what you'll want to do is um, you can do this one of two ways you can either take them both out and pull this thing up if you do that you want to make sure you have like a coat hanger or something because you don't want to let this thing um, you know draw a lot of weight on your line here your brake line so you'll want to secure it to something so you'll want to find like a you know a place where you can hang it and that way it's not just you know all the weight on this thing um, you can also on some model vehicles loosen one side pull the bolt out of the other side and flip this thing up like a convertible and then you can swap out your pads put the new pads in and then you flip it back down so uh, I'm gonna try that method first uh, I haven't done it on the rear of this car yet so it'll be a learning experience for me as well and then like I said we'll, we'll do a comparison of the brake pads and then I'll also show you what that really annoying squealing sound is uh, when you do wear down your brake pads too far. All right guys, so I, was, uh, I had to pull out both bolts and uh, pull this thing out. It just wasn't, there wasn't, it, it's not structured like some of the other ones, like I said, where you can flip it up. And when I pulled that off, you know, the, the front pad stayed in. So to get this off, you just kind of pull it out. It's pretty simple, right? No biggie. And like I said, I'll do a quick compare for thickness, you know, from this one versus the new pad. But these are pretty good uh, as far as thickness goes. Now, on the back side, so this is just that caliper upside down. Um, you can see here's the rear pad, and it's inside of the, um, the piston. This is super important, guys. If you're doing this don't let anybody get in your vehicle don't don't hit the brakes or anything like that because that's gonna push this thing out and if you do get it pushed out you're gonna have to push it back in and that's a whole nother process uh, if your brake pads are very worn um, you know you may or well, regardless uh, you, you may have to push it in a little bit uh, to fit it back onto the rotor with the newer thicker pad so that's something to just keep in mind and that's relatively easy to do uh, I recommend using like a block of wood and you just lay it across this singular piston. Some vehicles may have two pistons. You just want to make sure you're doing it evenly. And then the way you 
you know essentially want to push back on it there's actually a tool that you can buy that you get in here and you just twist it and it slowly screws it in and pushes it um, or you can use like a C clamp to clamp onto this and then slowly you know, tighten that C clamp until you've compressed it enough where it fits so you know something you can do uh, and just be aware of but to take this rear one off you just kind of pull that out and uh, so you can see here I don't have a whole lot of room and that's because this pistons out a little bit so I may have to push that thing back in order to get it out uh, it's like super close you can see I'm like right at the very edge here so I can't do that with one hand so I'm gonna have to go ahead and, and, and get a little space here so I can pull it out all right so when you order your brake pad kit it's going to come with all of the hardware you need to swap these things out so you've got your metal pieces here or these are actually aluminum and then you'll get four pads right you'll get two rears uh, or inner and then two outer so here's my inner and then uh, one of these flat ones here is going to be my outer so like in this particular case, it's very simple uh, in that the two pads are very different looking, right? So you can't get these mixed up. Um, so let's take a look at what the differences are, at least, you know, uh, in comparison between these two uh, brake pads. And I, I, again, I wanted to show you kind of the thickness. So, uh, let's see if I can get the light in here for you. So you can kind of see here that there isn't a huge difference in the, uh, in the wear. It's not too bad. Um, Yeah, it's not too too bad but definitely good timing on the replacement of these um, the other part I wanted to point out was how these things kind of function when we talk about understanding when to replace these so uh, if you've ever driven your car for a long time without getting your brakes done you've heard some like just nasty squealing right like a banshee just what you're hearing is this metal piece here it's rubbing on the rotor so it's rubbing on that thing right and it's nice and flat so it turns into like nails on a chalkboard right so when you're hearing that that's telling you that you've worn this pad down to the point where it's touching this right and maybe beyond so if you hear that you absolutely need to replace that brake pad as soon as possible because if you don't then you risk damaging your rotor and you're going to get into a whole lot more expense if you just pay attention and get it done right away so don't wait on it right get it done so again super easy i'm going to put the uh, new pads on and get the side reassembled and and that'll be a wrap um so let me go ahead and do that and i'll bring it back all right so we got the new brake pads in the new hardware in so and this setup here I had these little aluminum plates here so those were just swapped out from uh from those ones <clears throat> again not a big deal uh it all depends on your vehicle so this one is different like my truck isn't like this um <clears throat> had this upper little bracket there i've got this in i was actually able to push in the piston with just my thumbs um so that helped out quite a bit again you want to keep it even you don't want things to get cockeyed um so just be careful when you're doing that stuff and then now at this point all we have to do is put it back on and torque the bolts to the proper spec one of the things you may want to do is just check your boots so that's these things here make sure they're not ripped or torn or anything like that because uh, if they are then you'll want to replace those um, you want to make sure that they move freely see how that just kind of comes in and out uh, and the reason you're checking this stuff is if it's not um, doing so, 
then you can get uneven wear on your brake pads so one side of your pad will be worn down more than the other that's one of the things you want to look for when you pull out your old brake pads for uneven wear again if you do have that then then you've got a little bit bigger issue you want to check that that's an easy fix to do and you can get this whole job done here you know once of course you have your tools but you know the pads you might pay anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks depending on the brake pad you know quality you go with and then um, if you did have to replace these little bolts here at the local you know uh, auto parts store they'll probably be relatively low priced um, so you'll walk away with a far uh, less expensive you know deal to get your own brakes done so let me go ahead and button this up and we'll call it a wrap all right guys so we got everything all buttoned up here i just need to put the wheel on um, torque that down so it's important that when you put all this stuff back together you torque it sometimes these uh have like this little the slide pin has a little kind of um holding spot here you may have to put a wrench on so that way it doesn't spin when you go to tighten down your your bolts so just be aware of that <clears throat> and then again make sure you check your manual i recommend if you don't have it getting a hold of the um Chilton or Haynes manual specific to your car so that way it can provide you all of the torque values that you're supposed to know um, it will give you a breakdown of how to so this video is not meant to tell you how to I'm just giving you an idea of that of how easy this process is and how you can save yourself some money by just doing the work yourself so <clears throat> in this particular case fortunate enough that I don't have a warped rotor there's plenty of space on that so I'm not too worn down and uh, it's just a simple brake pad swap right so very easy to do and um, save yourself a lot of time and money so I'm gonna go ahead and put my tire on and that will wrap this up so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it provides you a little bit of information and some confidence and again I recommend you either getting a hold of your manual um, or searching YouTube because there are guys out here who do this for you know the how-to portion of it and um, you know specific to your car so to be able to cover kind of the little nuances that maybe apply to your vehicle that didn't apply to my vehicle right uh, if you did like this video hit that thumbs up if you enjoy my content become a subscriber I want you to join my community I want you to provide that feedback love to hear from you and if you don't want to miss it on the next video i produce every wednesday and sunday at 9 a.m pacific standard time uh, hit that notification bell and that way you get an alert that lets you know hey the new mike it yourself video just hit youtube so until then i hope to see you in the wind